Good morning. It's uh, time to process a little firewood. You see I got my old uh, Dram truck here hooked up to my dump trailer, which is under the conveyor. I've already split processed probably maybe four cord with this machine. I'm getting the bugs dialed out of it. It's uh, a lot of adjusting little things and it's not the machine's fault so much as it was my own fault. Eh, maybe the machine partly the fault. Uh, the pump was bad when I bought it, so it had no power. It wouldn't split. Uh, not only wouldn't split, it wouldn't have enough power to spin the saw and drop the ram at the same time. So anyway, with some help of uh, Range Road, which were amazing, they took my call right away, texted the guy that I bought it from, and he did all the troubleshooting he knew how to do, and then sent me on to the expert, the guy that I guess in the, uh, the supplier for, for him, and he was spectacular. I could not have asked for better customer service from any company than Ro uh, Range Road. And I know this is an entry-level machine. I have no... Um, aspirations to think that this is a big commercial machine it's got about a I'm gonna say a 30 second cycle time for everything you know the cut and the split and the conveyor to get the wood in so I know there's some really nice uh, uh, Scandinavian made machines that have like a six second cycle time or nine second cycle time or something which would have been nice to have but it uh, absolutely turned into uh, a way easier process than myself with a chainsaw or even my other um, my other processor that uh, or process maybe might be a better a better word with my chainsaw on the mount I still had to manually pick the log the rounds up put them on my splitter which I still use I use that splitter to run that table let me turn this around here so you can see my operation I'll even back up a bit all right so I'm back so you can see my truck trailer the way the setup I'm gonna walk out the my wood yard this is about a half an acre probably of woodland just cleared years ago that somebody had maybe for pasture and it's been growing in along the edges there's my old conveyor which is a hay conveyor that my uncle gave me it used to be electric and uh, I converted to a three horsepower gas motor and it works fine and I've got about uh, maybe 40 cord of wood here probably stacked up ready to be processed I sell about 100 cord a year it's not a huge business for me but um, today's my birthday so <laughs> What do I want to do for my birthday? One of my funnest things to do in the morning is to come up early and uh, process some wood before everybody gets out of bed and I love it. And if I can put a cord in that trailer this morning, I can just leave the thing parked and then we're going camping for the weekend. So it's, uh, and it's, uh, it's just a, an enjoyable hobby that hopefully pays for itself. So a year or so ago, I bought a Range Road firewood uh, live deck and I hooked it up to a chainsaw mount on the end. I think you guys have seen that. If not, you can check my other videos out on it. And the chainsaw would, would hinge down, the logs would hydraulically forward and advance, and uh, I'd be able to cut them off in 16 inch, or 12 or 18 or whatever I had the gauge set to. And then I'd have to pick them up off the ground. Usually about 10 minutes of cutting with the chainsaw gives me about 20 minutes worth of splitting on this split fire. This split fire is a, a splitter that I restored. You can also check that out as well. And I've got, well, 100 hours on this, or hundreds of hours on it now since it was restored. It's got a hydraulic table for lifting up the heavy rounds. It's a great machine. And I have it hooked up to run all of these, this valve body here that I'm pointing at. So that this this machine here with the pump runs that. And if I get a, a, a block or some big ugly knotted piece of wood that I think is gonna cause trouble pushing through the six way wedge, even though this is a 27 ton splitter, um, some of that bigger stuff is a little little cranky to go through there. I'll bring it over here because this will split anything. I can put this big ugly piece of birch on there sideways and it'll it'll shear it off as if it wasn't there. So anyway, it's a neat little system. I've had uh, people ask me how many cord an hour can I process with this system and I said that's a totally impossible question to answer and I see firewood processing companies and splitter companies that say they're capable of one cord an hour or five cords an hour or one cord every two hours it's an impossible number and the reason for that this here small four inch log I'd need to have about 170 of those to make one cord this here is about a an eight or nine inch log and I'd have to have I'm going to guess I actually did the math on it and I'll I'll review that and come back on it but a whole lot less of those to make a cord the sec the cycle time is exactly the same so let's say it's a 30 second cycle time every cut 30 seconds whatever let's let's pick that number 
it's going to take a whole lot longer to make a chord with this than it is going to make a chord with this, all things being equal. So this if it seems to me the ideal log to run through this machine is about a 12 inch log this is capable of a 16 inch log and it's a lot to handle just physically um it just seems to be you're you're adjusting the wedge um not that the rollers can't handle it but once the rollers stop pushing it then i have to manually push that slide that into the stop and you see that little flat piece i'll try to get out of the shadows there this this piece right there is set and you can see those two bolts and i just slide that where i want it to be and right now it's cut for or adjusted for 16 inch wood so so anyway to, to get a cord of wood it all depends on on how straight the logs are and how much you got to wrestle with them there's some straight ash there's about 20 cord right here of straight ash which is gun barrel straight and once i get into that i think i can make a lot of wood in a short period of time but this ugly old stuff there's beech and birch and uh, some twin top maple which is, just takes too much time to mess with going through the splitter or the processor i might even have to process that by hand it might take four hours to make a cord out of that so to to give a definitive number is impossible so all that to say i've been enjoying this processor and i know it's not the quickest machine in the world but it sure saves a lot of the labor for me so anyway let me shut this off shut stop talking start some machinery up and uh i'll uh, i'll show you how this all works it won't be a long drawn out uh, video but it'll get you an idea how how well this uh this machine works stand by All right, see if I can start this in one pull. I always shut the fuel off at night. Chokes on, a little bit of throttle, one pull.
So this is around what 15 minutes of splitting will give us with that machine cutting and splitting. Um, pretty good size wood and it's all a good variety. Nobody's ever complained that my wood's been uh, too fine or too coarse so it's, uh, it's a good mixture. People have some small stuff to get their fire going and some big stuff to bank it for the night. This trailer holds 180 cubic feet exactly. It's 10 by 6 by 3 feet high. And that's the magic number to get you a cord if it's loosely thrown in. I was stacking it in, but it takes too long. So now that I have a, a conveyor that'll reach and fill that trailer, I have no intentions at all of uh, 
zero intentions of stacking my wood in there anymore. There's a, a hole in the bottom between the, the grill here. You can see these, these holes here that the small stuff will fall through and also right there the small stuff will drop down in. So this, the wood stays pretty clean. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, so a little review of this machine, more a review of the service that I got from Range Road. They were spectacular. When I had a little issue with the uh, power, they walked me through all of the troubleshooting that I needed to know to, to figure it out, adjusting relief valves, and, and when we get to the point of it, we switch the front and the rear hoses, this one for this one, and that's what gave me, uh, I put this one here runs the splitter, the back one runs the splitter and the saw motor, and this one runs the accessories, so the um, conveyor and the uh, ram to drop the arm down, and um, so I swapped the two around and that gave me the power back on my saw motor and the uh, splitter that worked great after that. So they sent me a new pump and everything's working perfect and I couldn't ask for any better service. They sent it as quick as they could. Um, they paid the, the regular freight and I just paid a little extra to get it here on time. I keep a bucket underneath my saw to shoot and that keeps the... Uh, the well, what it does is it keeps the mess from me having to shovel it out every night, actually. Maybe it's lazy, I don't know, it's the mother of invention. But I take that sawdust and I, I just put it in the woods. I've got about a little over seven acres here. So I've got some trails that I, I try to keep maintained. And my wife uses it around the garden bed. Some sawdust always leaks out through the bottom anyway. i got to shovel out. But I had to do a few upgrades. Um, and there's a few things I'd like to do yet. This hydraulic ram, I'll back up here a bit. This hydraulic ram that... that raises the saw motor this whole business here hinges up and that's what drops the blade through the wood and it's way stronger than i am by hand there's a relief valve that i manually control when i got a big log i slow the fluid fluid pressure down and when i got a small log and speed it up and crank right through it but all that to say it would have enough power that it would flex this this and this it would bend these together you can watch it so i put a a little triangle angle brace well of that in place and then cross bridge these two across so it can't do that as well so you can see a drip right there that's my chain oil and that's about the perfect amount of chain oil it seems to keep the bar cool and i don't go through that much oil when that uh, is dripping i just shut this off to show you a little video the motor is works amazing. I changed the oil in it at five hours. It's got 10.9 hours, I think, now on it. Yep, 10.9 hours and a lot of troubleshooting in that. I'd say the first five hours, I wouldn't have cut a cord. And after that, um, this is probably going to be the, uh, I don't know, fourth, maybe fifth cord that I cut through this machine today. And I'm going to do that here within the next hour or so, I hope. I'm going to finish this little bit of wood that's on the live deck and then I'll fill this live deck up with my tractor and uh, I'll be able to uh, to fill that trailer up here and anyway that's about it for that the uh, that'll be a, an easy an easy morning's work for me so I would like to upgrade the motor though at some point this burns a lot of fuel more than I thought burns more fuel than my 22 horsepower Honda sawmill motor uh, mind you this is working all the time and my sawmill motor is not. It uh, only is revved up when the sawmill is running, when the, actually the blade is cutting. The rest of the time it's idling. And if I'm staging a log, it's off. I started up after that. So I had to uh, do the regular adjustments that I think every machine, when you get them, you got to figure them out. I had to adjust the actuator that turns the splitter on when the blade returns back up, and also what shuts the splitter off after it gets to the end of its stroke little things like that that had to be adjusted but as far as the quality goes it's exactly what I expected it to be I've got this 100 quarter more put through this live deck and uh, I've never had any issues not a leak or the hose has been good the hydraulic motor has been good chains have been solid I keep things lubricated so I don't worry about them breaking this little pin here that's actually where my chainsaw used to mount and would hinge and I'd have a stop in here that was adjustable I just dropped this bolt down in it 14 16 or 18 inches or whatever and i have that all set up so if something were to happen to this machine i could go back to that system again if i had to but anyway i think that's uh, about it i'm going to show i'll stop this video now and then i might show you a little bit later on about uh set up a tripod and show you how i load this this live deck it's a bit precarious but um it works okay for me i've got a grapple on my tractor and it works okay so 
anyway i get back to work it takes a long time to film a video it takes a lot longer when you're uh, filming to do your work than it does just to do the work so and there's a, a bee thinking we had a flower get to work bee <laughs> not a flower all right everybody over and out that's all i have to say about that for now Thank <laughs> you. 